x equals plus or minus minus three. Okay. Right, and you figure that out by using the quadratic equation or something, right? So this this looks like it's a fourth fourth degree polynomial, but you can just let um, let z be x squared, right? And then this this is a quadratic, and you solve the quadratic, right? So you get let z be x squared. This thing becomes z plus z squared over nine equals four, and then you solve for z, you solve for x squared, and then you, you get the answer. Okay, so x is going to be plus or minus three, and uh, plus or minus root three. Yeah. Zero to root three, and then here's two, right? Okay, so, and then, then what do you do? So, then what's the integral? What's the integral? Anybody? What's the integral? You all worked on it. Zero to root three. Um, x squared over three. Dx. Okay. That will give you this left part, right? Plus mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Everybody see that? Right. You get this part and then you get this part. Right. Uh Sri Chen Chen, you look like you have a question? What multiple parts? Oh, maybe you, maybe you, so did you try to do something like, I'm going to take, uh, take this thing and then subtract off this, this lower thing or something like that? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that will work, but it's just much harder than you need to think. Yeah, that'll work. Did anyone do it um, uh, dy rather than dx? Anyone do it dy rather than dx? That actually uh, would be simpler, right? Because then you only need one integral, right? So what what do you get, right? So this is root three here. So the y value here is one, right? This is root three comma one, the point of intersection. This is root three comma one. So the, you get the integral from zero to y dy, right? So. You have a circle, you got this thing, x squared plus y squared equals 4, and you have um, this thing, uh, y equals x squared over 3. Right? So, again, for fixed, uh, for fixed x, right? I'm sorry, for fixed y, for fixed y, what's the range of x? Right. Well, at the top here, what's x? At the right hand side, what's the x value? the right side, what's the y, what's the x value here? If this is y, then what's what's the x value? Continue. Uh, 
I just I just want the the y value, the x value. So, um, right. what's the So here, what is this? What is this x? Hmm? If this is y, right, and this is the circle is x squared plus y squared equals four, then what's x? Right? At this point, it's x y, right? What's what's x? What is it? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Square root of four minus uh, y squared. Okay. That's x. Right. And what's the x value over here? What's this x value? Square root of one. Minus three. Okay. Square root of what? Y minus three. Right? Is this confusing? I should not. I hope so. some people look kind of confused. Uh, detail up. I was like, three one. <laughs> it's confusing because it's wrong. Yeah, sorry. Three one. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I'm, I'm the one who doesn't understand. Okay, so then you get the integral from, uh, right? right, this height is 1, right, so you get the integral from 0 to 1 of um, the right side minus the left side times the height d1, right, there's this infinitesimal height dy, and then you have the length the length of this thing is root 4 minus y squared minus root 3 y. OK, and you see that, that you know, maybe that's easier than the other one. It's about the same, I'd say. Okay. Okay, any questions? Any questions about this? I had a student last semester, and whenever I said, is there anybody who has questions? He would be like, like this. And I would say, um, uh, do you have a question? Do you have a question? And, and he'd say, no, no, I don't. And I'd say, okay. okay. And then he, you know, I'd say, anybody have questions? And he'd be like, and he'd be like he had no idea what was going on. And I'd say, um, X, do you have questions? And he'd say, he'd say no, no, no. Finally, he came to my office and he said, Stop asking me if I have questions. I don't, have, <laughs> I don't have any questions. So I'm sorry. To me, you look completely confused. Um, yeah, but he felt like I was um, making him seem dumb to the rest of the class, right? Because I'm always asking, you know, do you have any questions? Right? But actually, he, he, he was actually understanding things. So, yeah. yeah, he was actually a good student, I should say. He, he got an A for the class. But yeah, but he always looked confused to me. Okay, okay, so areas, right? Areas, pretty, pretty, pretty simple thing. Okay, so let's go on to volumes. Volumes, it's sort of the same idea. So you know, a lot of calculus, um, right? So um, you know, calculus. It's basically um, stepping from the known to the unknown by means of the limit. Right? By means of the limit, right? The derivative, right? Somebody says, what's the slope of the tangent line here? And the way you figure it is by taking the slopes of secant lines, right? You take, you take f of x plus h minus f of x over h, which is something that you know how to do. And then you take the limit as h goes to 0. 
and you get the slope of the tangent one, which is something that was basically inaccessible to you before. Right? Taking the slope of the secant line is easy. Taking the slope of the tangent line is impossible. But with the limit, you can get it. Right? Similarly, right, somebody says, what's the area between these two curves? Right? And the answer is it's impossible right, for an elementary school student. But you, know, you can take, you know how to take areas of rectangles right, as an elementary school student. And so you take these approximations, and then you take the limit of them. Right? So calculus, you can think of calculus as basically being elementary school math plus the limit, right? plus the notion of limit, and then, and then you get calculus. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do right now is uh, uh, volumes, volumes of solids. Okay. So just now we did areas, right? Areas, you just take, you, know, you take these rectangles, and then you sum, sum the rectangles. Uh, with the with the solids, we're going to take slices. We're going to take these slices and then sum the volumes of the slices. Okay. So um, uh, um, so basically, it'll be something like this. You know, somebody gives you an object, right? Right. Maybe it looks like maybe it looks like this or something. Okay. So you got some sort of strange strange object. No, that's okay. Okay, let's make it simpler. So you have, you have some sort of object that's looked like this. Thing. Okay? Some sort of object, and they ask you for the volume of that object. Okay? And the idea is to slice it. Okay? So you, you, you cut through it. Right? You take some knife and you cut through it. Right? And you figure out what the area, area is. At that, at that cut. So th this, I'm going to cut it through with the plane x equals x naught. Okay. And then I figure out what the area is at each, at each slice. Okay. And then the volume is going to be the integral over the range, over the, you know, from a to b, of the area times this infinitesimal thickness. Okay, so you take each of these areas and you multiply it by an, an infinitesimal thickness, right? And you get some sort of, you know, infinitely thin uh, uh, pancake. Okay, you get the volume. Each of these things here, right? This is area times thickness, area times thickness, and so you get a volume of. Uh, Infinitely thin pancakes. Okay, and then you sum you sum all those things up over the whole range, and that'll be the volume. Okay, so it's just like just like the areas, right? We we took in the case of areas, right? We took these infinitely infinitely thin rectangles, and they have area, and we add up all those areas, and we get this, right? Now we're going to add up all these volumes and get the get the uh, get the volume of the total object. Okay. Okay. So, a question? A question? Question? Maybe you can't read what I'm writing. Maybe that's the question. Area times thickness. Area times thickness. Area times thickness. <coughs> volume. Uh, infinitely thin pancake. Pancake. Okay. So kind of a dumb dumb example to start off with. Okay. Um, somebody gives you a cylinder. You have a cylinder, and it's 10 units long, okay. and the radius is 3. Okay. So each slice, what's the area of each slice? 
right? If I take any slice, they all all the all the slices have the same same area. What's the area? Nine pi. Right? The area at whatever place is going to be nine pi. Right? And then the volume of this thing is just going to be the integral from zero to ten of nine pi dx. Right? Which ends up to be you know, nine pi times times the length. Okay. Right, so it's going to be the area times that length, and that'll give you the total. That'll give you the volume. Okay. okay. Now, um, suppose we have something like this. So you have something which sort of symmetrically grows. Your cylinder is now fat at one end. Okay. So it has um, radius 3 here, and it has radius 5 here. Okay. And um, you know, again, it say it's from length from 0 to 10. So it's length of length 10. OK. So um, now, if you cut at a time x, right? If you cut at a time x, what's the what's the area? What's the area then? Think for think for one minute. And try to get the answer. Yes, yes. So now instead of the cylinder that we had before, we have again a, some cylinder, but it's, it's increasing in, in width. The radius is getting bigger. Okay. And you're going to slice it through at, with the plane at, at x. Okay. I'd like to know the area of the slice at x. Right? The area at 0, right? the area at 0 is 9 pi. The area at 10. At slice at the 10 slice is is 25 pi. Right? What about the area at time x? When I slice it at time x, what's the area? Anyone figure it out? What is it? What's the area? Uh, maybe talk to somebody and see if you can figure out the area together or Yeah,
Okay, would anybody like to say? Wang um, Qingchang, how about you? <clears throat> what's the what's the radius of the circle? What's the radius of the circle? Okay, well, it starts it starts out at three, and in ten units of time, it ends at five. Right. So at time x, what's the what's the radius? Can anyone say? I hope. Point two x plus three. Point two x plus three. Yeah. So that'll be that is going to be the radius at time x, right? One-fifth x plus three, right? right? Because in 10 units of time, you gained two, two units, right? And it's a linear, linear change, right? So you get two-tenths, two-tenths x, right? That's, that's your change. You get three plus two-tenths x. So that's the radius, right? And so the area is going to be, area is going to be pi r squared. Right? Pi pi r squared. Right? And so, um, right, so the, then the volume is going to just be the integral of that. Right? It's just going to be the integral. You don't understand? I don't understand how you get um, the relation between x and the radius at the point x. The x and the radius? You don't understand how you get the radius. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, right, so look, the radius here is 3, right? Mm -hmm. The radius here is 5, mm -hmm. right? So let's, let's think about the radius. At time 0, it's 3. Right? Times zero it's three and at time ten it's five. Right? And it's this linear, it's increasing linearly. Okay. So what's the slope of this line? Well the slope the slope of this line is gonna be, you know, two over ten. Right? Because it increases two over over an interval of 10, right? So the slope, the slope of the line is 2 over 10, like, um, right? Here, here, here's the line describing the radius, Rx. Right? What's the slope of this? What's the slope of this line? What's going to be the change in y over the change in x? Right? Slope. Is the change in y or the change in x? No, that's that's uh, two, two over ten. Okay. Right. And so then, what's the equation for the line? Right. You know that um, uh, y minus three is equal to one fifth x minus zero. y is 3 plus x over 5. Right? So that's, that's the radius. 3 plus x over 5. You still don't get it. Can you use this in Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is basically similar. You know, when you're talking about the slope of a line, that is similar to triangle. Yeah, so you could say, look, you could say this is 2 and this is 10, right? If this is x, right, then what's this, right? It's not this one, but you take the, that's the change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's the same thing, but it's the same 
Uh, actually, I don't. <laughs> I, I can understand conversational Chinese, but I've never learned mathematical Chinese. <laughs> so, you should teach me what thing with them. Because I didn't use the method that you use here. Yeah. You take. Um, you take. Take a break. Take a break for five minutes. Go ahead and use your phones. You can use your phones during the break, but then after break, come back to it. Come back to it. Five minutes. Five minute break. Hey? No, no, no. I don't. I don't need a break. <laughs> Wait. Let me switch off. <laughs> 